Welcome, everybody. Appreciate you coming to the show. This is our 31st quarantine comedy. We started this beginning of quarantine. Then every, every two weeks, this tells you we've done it for more than a year. Luckily, the uh, quarantine is ending. Things are looking better. Thank you, Thank you for that. Uh, I'm just I'm not sure I'm ready to put pants on, you know? <laughs> I'm used to that. Um, now, we are comedians. We thrive on comedy and laughter. And we would love to hear you laugh. So if you don't have a lot of things going on in the background, please unmute your mic. Let us hear you laugh. If you feel you, you don't mind us seeing you laugh, we'd love to see that too. Hearing it you know, is, is a primary thing for us because uh, we can't always see our audience when we usually perform because they get those bright lights in our eyes. But we don't have the bright lights right now. So we get to see our audience. So feel free to turn your video on, unmute yourself. And definitely laugh. If you like our jokes, please laugh. If you don't like our jokes, just oh, yeah. forget about that. Uh, but uh, it's been it's been a rough time for a lot of the comedians here. Um, some of these comedians have been doing this as a career, as their primary income, and it's been a rough year and a half when you can't do comedy anywhere and you can't get paid for it. You have to find some other way of doing it. So uh, if you do like what you see tonight, please consider dropping a couple bucks into either uh, paypal.me forward slash BD comedy or cash app button down comedy. Uh, and that will basically be split between the performers. Uh, if you do enjoy it, please also consider following us on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Spread the word to friends and family that uh, might enjoy this as well. If you didn't like it, just tell your mother in law. You know, we don't mind. <laughs> but it's, I mean, it's, it's been tough. I mean, I've been, I, I've been basically stuck inside most of this time too. And, and the other weekend I had to help my daughter move. Now keep in mind, I have not had exercise in about a year and a half. I mean, the first time I played volleyball since the pandemic started, I broke my toe. Ooh. So, you know, it's, it's not been good. So lugging boxes and furniture up two flights of stairs over a period of two days, I was tired. I was panting like a dog in the desert. I was hunched over like a spring breaker after the fourth keg has been tapped. You know, the cat who hates everybody was rubbing on my leg, looking up at me with those eyes that just said, hey, if you're gonna die, do it here so I mean, I haven't had meat in years. <laughs> and it, 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 has, it has been real. I had a nasty cough. I mean, I coughed so hard, I would pass out. That wasn't the nasty part. The nasty part was the damn cough waited till I was in a deep sleep, then started coughing to wake me up so I could pass out. That's just, I was already asleep. That's just mean. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I've got, I got, I did not get COVID, thankfully. I've got the vaccine. I'm, I'm still unsure though. Is it the, was it supposed to be the first dose or the second dose that gave you the mutations? You know, I mean, you gotta know so you can know what costume to wear if you're crime fighting. I mean, seriously, if you get the third arm and you don't have a spot for it, it just looks like a hunchback. That is not a good look. <laughs> But I mean, I came through, I, I, no third arm, no crime fighting. I mean, I'm pretty much, was good. I mean, my, my middle testicles are a little itchy, but other than that, I'm good. Uh, I am, I'm a divorced father of two daughters. And that, that's not a dream. I mean, it's, it's not, it's not the dream I had when I was younger to be surrounded by women. Okay. It's not the dream. <laughs> I mean, the cat's female, it doesn't listen to me either. <laughs> but as, as a parent, you have those, those moments where you can pass along the, the wisdom to your child. My daughter's about five years old, we're at the dinner table. She's eating and talking at the same time. Honey, don't talk with food in your mouth. Without missing a beat, 
She reaches in, grabs the boot, holds it in her hand, and continues to talk. <laughs> so yes, there was a life lesson, and I learned it quite well. But as a comedian, so much of our comedy comes from our childhood, that, that trauma that is our parents. And my parents were awful. For comedic value, they were nice. They brought me up to be nice. My mother bought me a life insurance policy for Pete's sake. As I think about it, I think that's something she said, you know, I brought you in this world, I can take you out, I'm just making a little bit of money on the deal. <laughs> <laughs> but as a father of two daughters, it is with, with some satisfaction that I've seen over the last few years, women basically asserting their rights, you know, and their power. And, and it, makes me, it makes me very proud. But as a, as a single straight white male, there is something that I do need to assert. You women have, I mean, it's great. You can change your hair color, you can do that. I reserve the right to keep the same hairstyle for 30 damn years, okay? I don't have to change it every two weeks. It's my right. Uh, the, the pandemic's been tough. Up here. How many people went into the quarantine with that list of things you wanted to accomplish with all this yeah. extra oh, yeah. time, you know? I mean, eat better. Get in shape. Personally, I did not realize my shape was going to be a pear. <laughs> it is a shape. And I did want to exercise. I really did. I wanted to try yoga. And I didn't have a mat. Yoga without a mat is downward dog on ice. <laughs> and I wanted to, I wanted to make a Facebook group. You know, bring people together. So I wanted to make a group for procrastinators. I just kept putting it off. <laughs> I I did have a a job as a uh, at a uh, used car shop, uh, and they had to let me go. They said I wasn't quite what they were looking for. They were thinking, you know, sign spinner, not naked guy waving his arms. And during the whole pandemic, I keep seeing these X's on the ground. And every time I see an X, I'm looking for that precariously bound boulder that's about to crush me. That rock. Yeah. I know, too much Wiley Cody and Runner. I understand that. Round of applause if you've watched Wiley Cody and Runner. <laughs> you know, Wiley Coyote, self professed. Super genius. How much money did he spend going after that roadrunner? <laughs> I mean, he got instantaneous drop shipment from Acme. Do you know how much that costs? I do not because Amazon does not offer that. <laughs> I mean, come on. He could have bought filet mignon every single night. He didn't think, you know, hey, Grubhub, send me some roadrunner. <laughs> Super genius? I don't think so. And then, of course, you have all the whole hoopla about masks. So masks being useless. But I'll tell you what. If you're going to raid the Capitol, masks are useful. <laughs> if you're going to talk to reporters about raiding the Capitol, masks are useful. <laughs> On a side note, maybe not give them your real name. <laughs> I mean, these people were taking pictures, selfies with the security guards. One lady was live streaming a commercial for her real estate company during the raid. One guy had his phone number of his business, the back of his jacket. Oh. He, people stole stuff from the Capitol, put it on eBay under their real names. <laughs> this was not insurrection at the Capitol. This was America's Got Darwin. <laughs> and the, the, the real irony, the people who said masks were useless, 
I'm not saying we need to wear masks around people with vaccines so they don't catch the vaccine. <laughs> that is my time. I am going to introduce our first committee. We had a, a late uh, back, uh, scheduling conference with our, our opener and Alicia has uh, stepped in for us. A uh, very seasoned comedian who's always making me laugh. So please, uh, I don't have a, I'm sorry, I don't have a better intro for her, but uh, she has been, I'm doing Zoom comedy. Uh, I've seen her around for over a year now and she is always, always very good. So please, let's give it up for Alicia Wayne. Hello. Hey everybody, um, I just want to talk about something very, very serious right now. Um, yeah, very serious. Uh, this chair, it is like so, it farts. Like if you are, like, are on the same show with me and you're like, whoa, what's that farting sound? Guys, look, I would like to say, you know, like whoever smelt it, dealt it, uh, you know, just <laughs> own my own flatulence, but honestly, it's this chair. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm sitting at the wrong angle, and it, of course, of course, mechanic rules, as soon as you're like, hey man, this is what's going on, it doesn't happen. So I guess it was just me farting the whole time, you guys. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I uh yeah guys I I feel real I don't know if the word bad uh but I did sort of like start smoking again and it was just like uh you know whatever uh I can't really care that deeply about it like I just am like you know what life is kind of doing a number on me right now uh but the thing that I don't like about smoking, besides the whole smelling bad and cancer stuff, is um, the warning on the side of the pack. You know, they're like, it's bad for you. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> I get it. You know, like when <laughs> the warning on a, on a pack of cigarettes is kind of like when a bad boyfriend's like, I'm no good for you, baby. <laughs> yeah, I can tell from across the room because the glare from the bedazzled cross on the back pocket of your jeans started to blind me a little bit. <laughs> um, um, yeah, uh, yeah, those are the type of jeans that are only worn by uh, Midwestern women and Middle Eastern men. <laughs> yeah i can tell because you're like oh uh i'm best friends with members of the band nickelback <laughs> Mad News, bears arenos dude like we get it i could tell because i met you while you were selling an affordable cell phone plan on the street <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Yeah, when I heard that I thought to myself man it is my lucky day and uh, weirdly enough lucky was also your name so yeah <laughs> turns out uh, I'm just colorblind to red flags so oh. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I don't like internet dating because everyone's like lying all the time, you know, like everyone's, all the guys are trying to make themselves not seem like serial killers by hiding the lotion and the <laughs> basket, you know, and all the girls, they're just trying to find the best angle, you know, just, uh, oh, that's it right there. That's natural. That is a natural. <laughs> I woke up like this pose. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, and I just want to be able to cut the bullshit. I just want to be able to finally post COVID, go up to somebody and say, you make me want to make poor life choices. 
<laughs> I just want to get lost in you for three years. <laughs> and then start a raging drug habit. That yes. Job to lose my job, my friends, and my family. <laughs> my kids still don't talk to me. But I'm pretty sure that's too many characters on a Tinder profile. <laughs> uh, so I've settled for my description to be like a really attractive aspect of me. So I've settled for my Tinder profile just saying, I have back me. So um, <laughs> are gonna roll it. Um, yeah, you know, uh, before I was uh, like, hey guys, I want to talk about something serious. Now I really want to talk about something serious. Okay, this is something near and dear to my heart. Okay, I'm going to talk about how journeys don't stop even should be the actual national anthem. All right, I don't know what is more American than that. Okay, it's already halfway there. Okay, National Anthem plays at every sporting event. Journeys Don't Stop Believing also plays at every sporting event. Okay, okay, now we're on the same page. All right, so during the National Anthem, you're standing. During Journeys Don't Stop Believing, you're also standing. You are also on your way to the bathroom, so... Good, but you're still standing. So we're still on the same, still on the same page. The difference is during the national anthem, you got your hand over your heart, hat is off. Some people may have a tear coming down. What a bummer, okay? <laughs> during journeys, don't stop believing people are standing, they're dancing, they're kiss jamming. You're drinking a beer. You can't drink a beer during the national anthem. <laughs> I tried. People don't like it. <laughs> you know what else you can't do during the national anthem? You can't shotgun a beer during the national anthem, okay? You will get kicked out. You will. Uh, but, you know, some people are like, hey, man, don't disrespect the flag. You know, don't disrespect. Hey, man. Don't disrespect a double dog dare. Like if somebody double dog dares you, you have to do it. Okay. That is what America is all about. Okay. I'm just doing my duty. <laughs> supporting groups by accepting a double dog dare. So that is what's going on with me. I'm going to do a quick impression. This is my impression of famous scientist, Marie Curie, okay? Famous scientist, Marie Curie. Um, why is my skin green? Right, <laughs> pretty solid, pretty solid. And just like Marie Antoinette, I'm gonna be headed out. Oh! <laughs> Let's keep it going for Alicia. I cut you off there a little bit. Let's keep it going for Alicia Rain. Woo! Alicia, Alicia, you know, why do you pick on Tinder? I mean, I met my spouse on Tinder. I mean, we were married at the time, but you know. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Now, now our next comedian was basically having the camera pointing at her boobs the whole time you were on just so she could say hey the eyes are up here when she got on stage <laughs> uh, uh, i met uh, i met brooke she's early in the in the pandemic uh she has been uh, filling the world with puns since and uh you guys are going to be uh enjoying some laughs for uh, about the next 10 15 minutes please let's give it up for brooke barcel Now I have a little tickle in the back of my throat. I hope I don't pass out. 
<laughs> That's what happened to Gio. He would cough so hard he would pass out. Um, my name's Brooke. Hello. <laughs> um, I spell it with an E. And um, sometimes if like I'm in a hurry or something, I'll spell it wrong. And then I'm broke. <laughs> I know. Um, I try to be pretty clear that I need at least two O's. My, my pinky's sticking up because really I want more. Um, <laughs> at least two. But, uh, you know, if you want to give me 69 O's, I'll take them. <laughs> I'd be like, bro. <laughs> So yeah, I kind of have a little bit of a innuendo problem, if you will, like in you and no. Um, <laughs> but I don't want you to think that you can just have sex with me or touch me after the show. Okay. I, I'm really picky. I'm really picky. So I'm never really sticky. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. <laughs> uh, my mom, she named me after Brooke English from all my children. Um, <laughs> so I'm really a big disappointment. I don't have any children. <laughs> um, Brooke English has had four husbands. I've only had one. <laughs> if anyone knows anyone who might consider being my next ex, I need to <laughs> my mom happy <laughs> just kidding my brother has had four kids they're satisfied <laughs> seriously it's nice like to have that pressure off my shoulders <laughs> when i just need a cough really big i think then it'll be like fine but maybe not we'll see how it goes okay we'll just have a bet like will brooke continue and not cough at all or will there be like a really bad, like, don't take pictures of her during that moment? Because of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Um, <laughs> so Brooke English, two O's and an E, in case you're keeping track. Um, <laughs> I, my favorite movie growing up, I don't know if it's coincidental or not. It was Annie. Um the movie Annie, I loved it. I loved it so much. I told my mom that I really wanted to be an orphan. <laughs> she took me to go see Annie. <laughs> and then I had my suitcase packed and I was walking out the door. She's like, where are you going? I didn't real I didn't really understand how orphaning worked. <laughs> you don't just leave, like they have to die. <laughs> um, they have it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> didn't get that one either. Oh, I, I dropped the number 69 earlier. I really dropped that number a lot. It's kind of like my spirit animal, if you will. Um, even though it's technically a number, not an animal. But there is a 69 fairy. Um, not everybody knows, so I like to let everyone know. Um, he leaves cum underneath my pillow, so I know he's real. <laughs> uh, sometimes he'll show up just to like give you like a hey 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 and they'll be like a 69 degrees or a 69 percent on your computer like right at the right time yeah <laughs> uh, mostly because of equality i'm a big fan of the 69 right because like growing up in in the midwest like you give a lot of sixes right alicia <laughs> way too many sixes and it's like where's my nine where is it where is it i'm demanding them now like just gonna happen at the same time like i practice handstands a lot for that pretty much precise and only reason oh <laughs> uh, it's pride month it's pride month so fuck yeah to people being who they are being true to themselves, not having to hide or be arrested or worse. Wow, that'd be bad. Huh, shout out to the people who had to be persecuted so bad so we could be fabulous. Right. I'm up. I said for a little while that I was bi curious. If you're familiar with the term bi curious, 
Um, do you know what happens to cats when they get curious? <laughs> I murdered some pussy. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so bisexual yeah i'll go with that if you ever come over my doors you'll be like whoa they're swinging in every direction <laughs> it's true it's not a lie <laughs> nope i blame cheerleading um 100 not for being bi well maybe like yeah. those girls looked hot in their little shorts and i was <laughs> their age so it was fine like <laughs> I remember like cheerleading camp. I'm like, those shorts are hot. And I just remember shorts and butts and legs. And then <laughs> I don't remember. I kind of remember faces, but mostly they're, you yeah, all get it. Um, <laughs> first, <laughs> first day of cheerleading camp, they teach you uh, the two finger smile, which is kind of unnatural, to be honest, really. Like it's, it's a lot it's a lot for a job but they want you limber you know they want you limber you're cheering for guys to score constantly like score <laughs> score you're spelling it out s c o r e i want more come on me you know <laughs> and i'm a literal thinker <laughs> and we're like we ain't bad and we ain't cocky gonna ride on you like a Kawasaki. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, mom, what does that mean? I see all the football players. She's like, honey, they all don't start, but they're all gonna wanna finish. <laughs> it's like, let's all get fired up. We'll start and never stop. Never like well, <laughs> good thing I'm limber. Um, I had to suppress a lot of anger during cheerleading because the coaches were always kind of they were mean, they were controlling, they were narcissistic bitches with control issues. Um just judging. But um I would get really angry after cheerleading practice and I would rage to like limp biscuit break stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, fuck hockey players. Um. <laughs> here it is, here it is. <laughs> yeah, that was hot. <laughs> um, specifically, like, it's you don't get, like, when you're in Omaha, like, you get, like, one kind of human, basically. It's, like, white guys that like Nebraska football. <laughs> like, so when we had hockey players come from Canada, like, it was a big deal to me. I had to have a couple of them, like. <laughs> that actually helped me get through a lot of cheerleading and then um I would memorize pickup lines online and then I would use some of the girls at practice um <laughs> I'd be like hey are those space pants Jenny catcher because <laughs> your ass is out of this world slap her on the titties I know, eventually I uh, kicked off cheerleading, but <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> what do, you do? <laughs> oh, hi, Virginia. Hello. Nice to see you. I love this room. I've got Sharita and Alicia and Comedy John. He has like a whole bunch of other names after John in his real life. Um, Amira, I've been seeing her at Brian and, and Ham's stuff, so she's really cool. Um, let's see. Oh, so I talked about being a bisexual, but I didn't tell you about my my times of being a trisexual. Oh, you might not be familiar with the term. You're like, what is a trisexual? Yeah, what is that? Is she afraid to ride a bike? Um, <laughs> is she into guys with three dicks? I mean, <laughs> that'd be kind of cool, right? Like two down there and like one on the forehead. <laughs> everyone in here has fucked a dickhead before it's not that much of a stress <laughs> <laughs> but uh no i'm a trisexual because i'm into threesomes you know not the um not the like you get mad at me after the fact even though you said it was cool kind of threesomes not that kind 
the other kind where you're fine afterwards you're both regular because you were adults and you decided to do that anywho i went <laughs> i went to my friend's housewarming party and i had a bottle of wine okay cleverly named menage a trois <laughs> the red blend yeah and uh so i go to my friend's housewarming party and i'm like hey ruby it's menage a trois and i'm open and I was going to open my mouth. <gasps> Broke. Mm, 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 foot, mouth, now. And I'm like, what? And she's like, that's my stepdad. <laughs> uh, damn it. Um, okay, well, I'm open. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> kind of by far the hottest threesome I've ever had. Like, hands down. Like, <laughs> And like a little bit because you know I wasn't gonna leave her out. <sighs> Hell yeah. Um I've been <laughs> I've been told my like, oh, no, I mean I I hear that I have big clit energy. <laughs> I don't know if you're familiar if you've heard of that. I don't I didn't know for sure like if that meant like oh I have a huge clit, right? So I don't know, right? I don't know. I don't know. I don't have an eggplant emoji. It's like not easy for me to know, right? Like, I don't go to the store and I see the eggplant and I no, like, what are we down there? You know, are we like flowers? Are we like a chickpea? You know, are we like like a roast beef accordion? <laughs> <laughs> like a hot pocket. <laughs> just like I want to have like seven more tags someday for those um <laughs> um you can call them your dingle dangle um so anyways I'm like I should go online and look at this like I should just do some webbing webbing right and uh be careful <laughs> oh there's a lot of clip bait made <laughs> on the internet and then um i was spelling it wrong so i was looking at volvos <laughs> i was like what i don't look like that and they're like tell me your volvo experience and i'm like okay <laughs> and that got sent back to me and flat but uh it's not you need to make sure there's a u in the volva a u and a uh <laughs> But yeah, I, I did a lot of research. I saw a lot of shapes, um, a lot of sizes, lots of color, um, different color. It's pretty cool. There's a vulva gallery on Instagram if you're wanting to look at them. Most of them are drawings, so you should be okay. Um, <laughs> there is a procedure that they do, though, that kind of bothered me. Um, it's called, it's literally called a hoodectomy. A hoodectomy. And I'm like, it's like a trim trim, like a, like filleting your mignon, like <laughs> for your, and I'm like, come on, come on, really? Come on, like, no, like let your floor a flat flop. <laughs> like if it looks like romaine lettuce, <laughs> let that floor a flat flop. <laughs> like however however shape it is you know um <laughs> i'm not gonna walk up to a flower right like i might walk up to a flower but i'm not gonna be like hey why is that over there and why is that over there and why no goodness no no i'm gonna be like you know like you smell nice you know i'm like can i take a picture that's just if you're into that you know, like, can I pluck you a little? Because <laughs> flowers. <laughs> yeah, so just let your flora. A little, 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 little flappy, a little, little flop. Um, just be you, you know. A lot of times they're like, be you, and then they're like, oh. <laughs> this time just down there, like, accept yourself, right? <laughs> Ever take a personality test and they're like, Whoa, whoa, what at a time. <laughs> Please. 
Okay, I'll just tell a couple more jokes and then I'm gonna hit the road. I'm not gonna hit the road. I'm gonna watch the next comedian. But um, I am in a lawsuit right now with five guys. Uh, to circle back, so I, yeah, I do give the dudes some love. Um, I'm fucking, I'm fucking suing them for false advertising for having a sign that first off makes false promises when you go there with one thing in mind and one thing in deed and they cannot deliver. They have peanuts, they get you thirsty on the intake. You know, sure, burgers, fries, whoop-de-doo, you can get that shit anywhere. So I said, change the sign or change your business plan and make sure there are at least five guys there every time. <laughs> and my lawyer said, it's fine. It's okay. I can relax. The jury is hung. <laughs> I was like, fine, I'll just go next door to Pickleman's. <laughs> it's a sandwich shop in town, and I did go there. I went there, and I said, hey, I would like one whole pickle. A whole one. A whole dill pickle. Very clear. Like I put on Tinder what I want very clearly, right? But then you don't get what you want, right? You don't. You say <laughs> what you want, and then you don't get what you want, and you're like, I want a whole pickle, and then they cut your pickle, and you're like, I didn't tell you to cut my pickle. I didn't give you permission to get for you to cut my pickle. And then right now you just cut my pickle like it's no big deal, but it is. <laughs> I don't know what I had planned for the pickle. We were gonna have a picnic in the park. <laughs> I was gonna do a whole story. We had, I had little sunglasses. Like me and my pickle. I had songs written. They just can't, just because they're like an evolved Western society, they think they can just cut pickles. <laughs> and it's like your pickle your choice your pickle your choice um i hope that hits home for some of you i'm really like double layering it on the meanings um <laughs> you know it looks like a penis and and they do actually um they cut off the most sensitive part of the penis when a baby they don't even okay anywho jokes 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 I'm a uh, Brooke makes fun. If you want to follow me on stuff and then Brooke makes come on the Instagram. I mean, the only <laughs> fan, I could not do that on Instagram. That would get so. Thank you, GL. <laughs> Going for Brooke. Brooke, you know, I like five guys, just not all at once. <laughs> I'm a lot though. <laughs> 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 that 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 is probably the uh, the most understated comment I've seen. Her <laughs> yes, she is. <laughs> I hope everybody's having a good time. Uh, if you're enjoying the show, please, uh, you know, think about dropping a few dollars to the comics at uh, PayPal.me forward slash BD Comedy or on Cash App at Dollar Sign Button Down Comedy. Um, definitely join. You know. Uh, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, we have these shows every other Friday. Uh, and we always want to have a nice crowd because it's our, it's our heroin, you know, that laughter. You just need it. Got to have it. So good. <laughs> it is. Our, our next comedian is a Chicago-born educator, comedian, and public speaker formerly based in Shanghai, China. With her unique raw energy and raw biting wit, she recently won the Flappers Comedy uh, Club Super Bowl. She's been, she has featured for veteran comedians uh, Simeon Goodson, Mateen Stewart, and Justin Rivera, and accompanied, accomplished her first 30 minute headliner in April 2020, along with uh, founding Hey Now Comedy, China's premier black comedy crew. Erica became one of the first black comedians to perform in Mongolia at the inaugural Silk Road International Comedy Festival in July 2019. Hey, can I Please, wow. let's give it a big round of applause for Erica Schwitzer. Gio, I got to update all of that. 
I was so <laughs> old. Now I did my second headline in April and I just finished uh, the Laugh Riot Girl Festival, but that's something for another day. Y'all need, just need to go to airbusa.com and then all of the other, so for, I'm over here, right here. Go to all these socials after this so you can find out all this other stuff that I've been doing since the last time I was on G.O. show because apparently I don't communicate well. I am sorry for that. <laughs> That's not the introduction that I wanted to give you, but here I am. I am Erica Switzer. I am a Black woman with a German name that used to teach English to French kids in the middle of Shanghai, China. <laughs> I add one more nationality to that. I get a free venti something from Starbucks. <laughs> but anyway, I used to love my job, y'all. I used to teach my kids the classics, Macbeth. But what Kanye West is Macbeth. Kim Kardashian is Lady Macbeth. You know, the original clout chaser. Because I do believe it was Shakespeare who wrote, alas, she'd be a gold digger. <laughs> <laughs> And the lady doth protest a broke. So see, I used to teach my kids those classics, you know? And as Gio said, I do have the distinction of being the first black comedian to perform in Mongolia, which is cool. Thank you. That in 750 will still get me a foot long at Subway. <laughs> it was a great experience. It was so cool. For me, it was like when the Silk Road melt the Met the Silk Press. That's what it was. It was amazing. It was like when Shaka Khan met Genghis Khan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Loved every minute of it. And fun fact about Mongolia. Mongolia is a very young country. The average age of a person is 27. 27, right? So I got picked up from the airport by a 27-year-old comic. And they're playing Kendrick Lamar. And I'm like, yo, rap music in Mongolia? We bumping. Like, we went to a 7-Eleven in Mongolia and they were playing Tupac. You know, I was like, what? Crip walking in the middle of Ulaanbaatar. It was amazing. But nevertheless, this kid looks up at me and he says, hey, so me and my friends, we grew up on rap music. And we call each other the N-word all the time. So what do you think about that? Thank you, baby. And I said, oh, love you, sweetheart. Bye bye. Oh, grandma. <laughs> <laughs> grandma. We love you too, grandma. Thank you for being here. So exciting. But yeah, this kid said we call each other the N word all the time. So what do you think about that? Uh, and I'm uh, like, I'm not the authority on the N word, but uh, <coughs> do whatever you want, Meninja. It's all right. It's all right. That, y'all, I got to redo that damn joke. <laughs> because, first of all, stop Asian hate. But it's just, you know, I understand. I'm going to retool that joke. I need another N word because I would never go over there and just be like, yeah, do whatever you want. But no, I would never do that. I don't even like the word myself. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, read, I'm gonna read you that joke just because. But that was a fun experience, y'all. That was amazing. I was in China for four years. I was also divorced when I left for China. There is nothing you know about China that smacks of joy, right? Nothing about China says, I'm gonna go eat, pray, and love through China, right? This is crazy. So my divorce made me feel some type of way, y'all. It made me feel broken. I felt like I was romantically disabled when all I was trying to do was be pussy paralyzed. <laughs> it, the, the divorce, man, you know, and um, the, I, I was trying to get back out there on the scene. I wanted to go ahead and try some different dating apps. And this one time I got matched with this real hot Korean guy, like BTS hot. I was like, okay, <laughs> I want to put a little hot sauce in my kimchi. <laughs> and so he messages me 
Have you ever eaten Korean guy before? I said, I like bibimbap, not bibimbap. <laughs> and then I got messaged by this real buff Chinese guy once. And I said, what's one thing you're not afraid to admit here? And he said, I'm gay. I said, I know I'm a handsome girl, but damn. You know, it's real interesting. I, I, I was feeling some type of way. Uh, you can probably tell by the way that I talk. My ex-husband was white. So actually, if you take a grab from my love life, my ex-husband was white, ex-boyfriend black, current boyfriend white. So a graph of my love life kind of looks like a chessboard. <laughs> Hell yeah. But I'm the queen. <laughs> I'm the queen, you know. <laughs> Because I'm always checking my mates. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I mean, when you think about a chessboard, the king just sits there, does nothing. The queen is the one that makes all the moves. And the bishop just kind of sits there looking like a dick. But anyway, <laughs> you know, I had, I had started going out on some dates with some of these guys. And uh, I, was, I was feeling some type of way, you know, like I said, I, I wanted to kind of come home to a brother. I wanted to get back with a black dude, you know? And uh, when my divorce uh, had been finalized, I found myself in a movie theater looking at the movie Black Panther, looking at these deep, dark, chocolate warriors. <laughs> <laughs> Just shining in their destiny. Just... <laughs> you know, I wanted to come home. I wanted to let a brother hit it one good time for Wakanda. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but alas, my vag has been recolonized. It's okay though, it's okay, it's all right. Look, my boyfriend doesn't look like my usual type of guy. I usually go for guys that are clean cut, that are stocky, got some nice facial hair going on, like Comedy John. I usually go for a guy that looks, you know, he's a handsome guy. Comedy John, you look like you own stocks. Uh, my portfolio isn't that extensive. No. Okay, first. But thank you. First of all, you know the word portfolio, so we can work with something. <laughs> this is the usual type of guy I would go to. My boyfriend, he's... He's short, he's skinny, he's got long blonde hair. When he turns around, he looks like a hot Ukrainian chick. Oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hot is still hot, right? I mean, he's a beautiful boy and I'm a handsome girl, so it works out. <laughs> but I mean, really, have you ever seen those couples where the guy is hot, like model hot? And then you look at the girl like, she must have some good pussy. That's <laughs> trying, to, trying to not be, well, I mean, I do own some good, good, but I'm just saying, you know, and uh, he's kind of this real, he's very white, but he's very black where it counts, y'all. Okay. I mean, God. Dang, it's amazing. We met last August and the first dick pic he sent me is still downloaded. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, when I think about the goodness, y'all, hallelujah. Um, um, anyway, <laughs> this is, I, I got like 10 more minutes to go then I'm gonna go get me some of that. I am not ashamed to admit. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to, not trying to brag, but when you get a good, god dang it, use it. It's amazing. His dick is so big, y'all. For us, sex is social distancing. <laughs> <laughs> but what's interesting about him is he's from Chicago. He is Chicago, Chicago. And his voice is Chicago, Chicago. So it's interesting. When we're having foreplay, when it's sexy time, 
He's like, oh, yeah, baby, get it hot for daddy. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> just let this happen, baby, let it happen. Okay. But that's all right, because during sex, I like to imagine that my vagina sounds like a big buff black dude from the Bronx <laughs> with a two pack a day habit. My vagina wears Timberlands, old child support. Yeah. So during sex, I like to imagine she's going, oh yeah, daddy, that's my spot. Oh yeah, that feel good, B. I'm about to come, dead ass, I'm about to come. Yeah, you know, that's, she's, uh, she's an energetic little, <clears throat> calm down, girl. <laughs> So we didn't know what I'm talking about, <laughs> you know? And uh, I remember this one night after we made glorious, 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 passionate love. I overheard him on the phone with a car dealer. Yeah, I overheard him on the phone with a car dealer. And uh, he said, hey, hey, you can't be selling guys cars with no transmissions. I mean, my van's parked outside my job. What am I supposed to do with that? And I was like, oh, baby, what's up with that? And he's like, well, I was trying to turn my van into a tiny house situation, <laughs> which is a real millennial way of saying I'm homeless. <laughs> I was curious. I was like, well, what, what, for real, wait, what? We have to investigate this. I have to figure out what's going on. Like, are you saying, are we, are we talking Oscar to Grouch? Or are we talking couch <laughs> surfing? Like what's going on here? And as he took my titty out of his mouth, he said, <laughs> not homeless enough to go teach in English in China. <laughs> <laughs> Touche, baby, touche down. <laughs> so we moved in together recently. It's fun. We moved in together, y'all. It's amazing. <laughs> and um, I've been so stressed out, guys. I, I don't know. 2020 has done a job on me. Uh, I got so stressed out. I started <laughs> stress eating gummy vitamins. <laughs> I knew I had hit a bad patch when I wind up getting caught by him in the bathroom closet, wrist deep and a bottle full of lemon drop vitamin D's. <laughs> you know, like I really need 3000% of the recommended daily value of vitamin D. I don't. But I, I figured I had to do something about it. I said, hey, I, I got you some of your own blood orange men's multivitamin chewables. And next thing you know, me and him sitting on a futon together, wrist deep and gummy vitamins. <laughs> sitting over here like some Flint, overgrown Flintstones kids, you know, <laughs> 10 million strong and growing head asses over here. <laughs> And uh, no, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get myself together. I gained the COVID-20 myself. And uh, so I wanted to try to work this off. I mean, I'm coming from a place where I'm plus sized. <laughs> it's just my titties. But anyway, <laughs> so I wanted to try a new drug. I wanted to try a new medication called Victoza. Victoza. That sounds like the name of a mob boss that wears smart suits with sandals. <laughs> like, yeah, Victor's over here, ain't see me, yeah. I'm over here fighting off all you see. you know? It's like, mm, okay. okay, I wanna try this though, but I'm, I'm curious. I used to be a teacher. I wanna know what I'm putting into my body. I go online and I look up a review and the first review I saw said, difficult to asses. <laughs> difficult to asses <laughs> so right so English teacher Erica is like bless they heart <laughs> mm -hmm. 
But the real Erica's like, uh uh, difficult. <laughs> Give this ass a hard time, okay? I want you to go quantum physics on this ass. <laughs> so I'm, you know, I'm trying these things, but I, I have to, I'm trying to think, guys, what are we doing with these drug names nowadays anyway? What do they sound like? This is weird to me. Abilify. Abilify is a drug that gives you the ability to do the thing you weren't able to do before you took the Abilify. I'm trying to make that make sense. Cedra. Cedra. This is a weird one. X-I-I-D-R-A. That's my cousin. And Trimfa, Trimfa, Trimfa. I went to school with her. And uh, Chantix, Chantix, which sounds like Esperanto for I need a fucking cigarette. Chantix. <laughs> Very interested with these drugs. Y'all, we've been having a nice, fun, loose night. I see y'all laughing and smiling. Thank y'all for being here looking all sexy and stuff. All hearts and unicorn farts. Good to see you. How you doing? <laughs> Megan K, thank you for hanging in there, baby. I wish I, I knew what you look like right now. I hope you are partaking in one of them beautiful beverages like you are on your picture. You're going to need one for this one because I'm going to go ahead and tell you a little something more about me. I haven't revealed a, a lot of this to a lot of people yet, but... Uh, you know how when you get those social media notifications of some stupid post you made on Facebook like 10 years ago? <laughs> like, OMG, Brittany is my BFF forever. <laughs> and there was like a birthday party video of you dancing to party rock anthem back in 09. <laughs> my Twitter decided to tell me that 10 years ago today, I was a movie reviewer. <laughs> I was a porn reviewer. Oh. <laughs> or a commentator. <laughs> I like to call it. And the struggle was real. It was 2008. I, you know, the housing thing happened. This is how I was paying my rent, y'all. It was real. And when I signed up, I had told them, please, just because I'm Black, don't give me the ghetto porn. They gave me the ghetto porn, y'all. Um, I need to explain this. One of the first videos they gave me looked like, and of course, who else pays attention to backgrounds and rooms whenever there's porn on? But this particular video they gave me looked like my grandmother's attic with the 70s brown shag carpet and everything. There was a girl who was riding a guy with the most deadpan, cold face, just dead fish eyes, getting pork. And then her name flashes on the screen, out to lunch. I would say that's an understatement. Um, and then who she was getting porked by is a guy, a, if you know his name, shout it out as I tell you, he stands up, he's tall, he's skinny, he's, he's really ripped like an ebony god. And he pulls out his pain and he pulls his eggs to the either side of them. And it's like, yeah, baby, yeah. You like that? That's a dick dog. That's a dick. And I'm like, y'all gave me this shit. That's a dick dog. Wesley Pipes with his legendary dick dog. And all the while, all of this nonsense is going on. I take note of how many bullet holes are in the back wall. And I'm trying to wonder why they would give me this mess in the first place. I'm sorry. You know what? Forget this joke because here, I'm going to go ahead and close on this one. So <laughs> when I start feeling bad about myself, like I might after this show, I love watching American Idol rejects. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with getting lifted by some of the worst to ever do it. So there was this one particular uh, audition that was like from the 2003 season or something like that. I don't remember because my entire college era was a whole phase. But anyway, 
there's this beautiful girl that goes up and she looks like a Britney Spears ringer. She's gorgeous. She's got the shoulder lift blonde hair, the blue eyes. She's wearing the Daisy Dukes. And I'm like, yeah, go ahead, girl. You about to do your thing. Let's see it. Let's see it. And she starts singing her song. Good love and body rock and knocking boots all night long. Yeah. And I said, wait, what? Hold on. Yo. <laughs> Knocking your boots? <laughs> you laughing because we got some 80s and 90s babies in here. What song did you get in trouble for singing comedy, John? Because I love to be on uh, <clears throat> It's an oldie but a goldie. I love singing very loudly and gloriously. Does my ring hurt? your finger when you go out at night <laughs> when i bought it for you darling it seemed to fit just right i won't go on but the punchline is does my ring hurt your finger i think that's great <laughs> you got in trouble for singing a song well i'm a teacher too so yeah Oh, okay. So well, now we're in tricky territory, John. Come on now. Hold on. Who were you? <laughs> when was this? Were you singing it to the teacher? No, I was the teacher. <laughs> but I said, what song did you get in trouble for singing? So now we going, come on now, John, wait. Well, was, here's me walking around school singing, does my ring, you know, to, and there's kids walking around. So I got in trouble. You didn't say like get arrested. Okay, this is, well, I'm glad that didn't happen and I'm glad that didn't go off like that, but wait a second. Yeah, yeah I've got worse. <laughs> I was hoping you would have said, you know, Afternoon Delight, a <laughs> sexy song that you got in trouble for singing. Okay. Knocking the boots is what got my ass thoroughly whooped at age nine. <laughs> And here I am surprised that this lovely lady has given us this. John, you have been a lovely audience member the whole night. You all have been lovely. This has been awesome. Gio, thank you for having me. Y'all be good. Follow me on all my stuff. America Sweater. Amazing. Y'all in. Mm. Hey. Spencer. And Marcel. And Lisa Rain. Hope everybody has much fun as we did. Um, it was, uh, uh, I'm glad everybody stayed. Uh, we had a nice audience member, wonderful lineup tonight. Uh, if you had a good time, please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram and come to our, our next show. Uh, if you really had a good time, please consider dropping a dollar or two on uh, paypal.me forward slash BD comedy or on Cash App at Dallas Sign Button Down Comedy. And let, let's show these comedians just how much you enjoyed the show. Um, look forward to seeing everybody next show. And thank you again for coming. And please, drive home soon. Thank Have you, Gio. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Peace and love, everybody. Thank you for watching. That was fun. Good to see you. You too, always. <laughs>